This episode of the Sports Box is sponsored by DJ Cruz, a.k.a. Anthony Cruz. For all your DJ and event planning needs, call Anthony at 609-513-6395. And mention you saw him on the Sports Box. Well, hello again and welcome to the Sports Box. And just like hot fudge, it makes everything better. I am Mike Galetta, a.k.a. Hampton Mike, along with my partner, Brian, the Ranger of Brian, how are you? I'm good. You know, I, I think sometimes I might need that mask from, you know, watching you oh, throw stuff you at me. Yeah. <laughs> At least your aim is better. Yeah, take, there take it the is. camera out today. Uh, hopefully, I don't take anything out anymore. <laughs> um, I got the mask on today, folks, because we are at our NHL midseason review. We're going to talk about you know the All Star break happened. We're going to talk about how the teams are now and how we kind of laid an egg on our playoff predictions and call each other out a little bit. Um, Brian, where do you want to start? You start in the Atlantic Division, I guess, or so. I guess we'll start in the Atlantic Division. You know, um, we we go back to some teams, Mike, that we both thought were going to be pretty good this year. You know, yeah. we were pretty much in agreement. Mm -hmm. You know, we we, we all mm -hmm. felt that Tampa Bay, Florida, Montreal were the class of this division. Yeah, boy, uh, we laid an egg there, didn't we? Yeah, you know, you, you look <laughs> at it now. Um, you know, Mo Montreal is ahead. I think further ahead than anybody thought they would be. You know, Carey Price yeah. coming back's done really well. And I'll give some credit. You know, I think the Shea Weber trade has not been an abject failure as I thought it might be on behalf of Montreal. For Montreal, correct. But you look at some of the other teams, you know, uh, T Tampa's four spots out of a wild card right now. Yep. Florida's two spots out of a wild card right now. And the teams taking their place, Ottawa and Boston, teams that we really didn't think were going to do no. uh, th that well there. So in the Atlantic, we both kind of screwed that one up yeah. a little, little bit. You got Detroit, we, we thought was going to go farther. They've gone to a four-hand losing streak before the All-Star break. Yeah. They're having their troubles. Um, you know, like you say, you talk about Florida. What what happened to Florida? We were big on them. We thought they were moving along, and uh -huh. and, and then all of a sudden they just went in reverse. Um, and then Tampa Bay. I think Tampa Bay is is, is just, you know, they, they, they played at such a high level last year that they're not playing at that level. They're playing at an average level this year, and, and they're just not up there yet. Um, can they make a run? Can they make a move? I still think Tampa Bay could be in the mix. I mean, I, they, they have to get on a nice run. Mm -hmm. um, is it going to happen? Uh, it's soon to be determined. But yeah, yeah, we, that Montreal trade, that the Shea Weber deal, I think was was great for Montreal. Was not so good for Nashville. I think you got rid of a guy in Shea Weber that was there, had a lot of clout, good with the chemistry there, and, and they gave the Montreal, and they just got that much stronger, especially with Carey Price in goal. Absolutely. Uh, you take a look at the Metropolitan Division, yep. where you know we have some allegiances there. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> love it. So, so coming in, uh, you know, we both really felt that you know Washington and Pittsburgh were the studs of the division. Yeah. Um, you know, after that, it was kind of a you know mishmash, a hodgepodge of teams. You know, I felt the Rangers were the third best team. I still do. Um, Mike felt the Islanders were going to be a, a force to be reckoned with. Waving a lock, that killed me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's Mike, well again um, anyway. So. so, Mike, about those New York Islanders, you know, yeah. and, and I will say this. Uh, there are a couple teams in the league that stand out to me as, you know, surprise disappointments, and it doesn't take that much to, to look past the Metropolitan Division for that. A big surprise for me is Columbus. Oh, Huge yeah. surprise is Columbus. But Brodsky All-Star game, I mean, he's, look at him, he's playing great. Hartnell playing well. I mean, a lot of those guys are playing real well. Yeah, I give John Torrell a ton of credit. You know, this team was hot towards the end of last year. They were a bit of a sexy pick to do something good this year, but mm -hmm. there always are, and you always think they're going to take that next step. This might be the year, you know, for them to really do something in the playoffs. I think they're in a tough spot because this division is loaded, Mike. Look at some of these it's teams. It's very much loaded. Um, and like you called me out on the Islanders pick. Uh, you know, I just thought I got kind of a little blinded by what they did last year with the, you know, Halak playing well and Tavares having a great year that he did. I mean, they're, they're obviously not doing that. Halak got way um, they're a different Islanders team, so you know, credit me, I blew it <laughs> on that pick. But in the same sense, we Columbus came out of nowhere for us. They're really playing a high level. They had one of the best tricks going in the NHL this year, 15 in a row. Um, you know, Bobrovsky, Atkinson taking the place of Malkin. I mean, there you go. Malkin, one of the best in the game, goes out of the All-Star game, and who do they call up? The guy from Columbus. So that, that just shows you they're taking leaps and bounds. And, you know, a big disappointment for me is, um, you know, um, in that division is probably the Islanders for me. Mm -hmm. it's no. just, they've, they've really disappointed me. I would agree. You know, we both felt the Islanders were going to be a wild card team at the yeah. very least. Yeah. Um, what's interesting is, you know, one of the surprises, kind of going back to the other side of the East, is Toronto. Yeah. You know, Toronto is a team right now that's contending for a spot. They're they're one point behind the Flyers right now for that last wild card spot. Yeah. And you gotta love what they're doing there with the youth. I mean, Austin Matthews is having a great, fan, just a great, great rookie season. Yeah. You see what Mitch Marner is doing. You see what William Nylander is doing. Anderson's I mean, they, helped out. In goal. Yeah, no, they're a team that you know if they continue to you know draft very well, and they really have. You know, you give so much credit to Brendan Shanahan, so much credit to Mike Babcock. They've just done a hell of a job with that team. Yeah. That's going to be a team for many years to come. That's going to be a force to be reckoned with. But you know, again, you look at the Metro. 
and you, and you look at the teams that are there, and, and four of those teams, Mike, between Washington, Pittsburgh, Columbus, and the Rangers, are among the top nine teams in the league yep. based on points. Yep. That's just, you know, that's a tough spot, honestly, for the New York Rangers. Quick note for the Metro is that there's been rumors that Carolina is going to be moving out of that area, but supposedly Bettman squashed Bettman that said this no. week, but I, I, said no. you, who knows? They're getting the Las Vegas Golden Knights next year, so who yeah. the hell knows what's yeah. going on. I, I guess from the Ranger perspective, I think that the best course of action for them, if they if they could, you know, I, I feel like I'm doing a redux of last year because I know I said the same thing last year. Yep. If they can end up in that first wild card spot, go over to the other division and play the playoff teams there, I think it's definitely in their best interest because yeah. I don't feel that they would be able to beat Washington and Pittsburgh. Yeah, they're, they're they even. I, they might not beat any of them, but they're they, in a tough division. They won't beat either of those teams, especially not together. If you go over the other side, you end up playing a team like a Montreal or a team like a Boston. These are beatable teams compared to these powerhouses in the yep. East, but it's tough. Again, it's it, even Columbus. I mean, Columbus is going to end up playing either Washington or Pittsburgh in all likelihood. Yep. That is not an easy first-round draw for a team that's probably going to finish top five in the league in points. Yep. Pretty, pretty, pretty insane. Um, so from the East, you know, we, we, um, we were a bit of a different opinion in who we thought was coming out of the East. Mike, you, <laughs> Mike, you felt that Pittsburgh was coming out of the East. Yep. I think that pick still probably has some legs to it. Yep. Mine, not so much. Uh, I, uh, <laughs> I, I, I was really on the Tampa Bay bandwagon this year. Yeah. I, I know the Stamkos injury plays a role in that, but they've really not played anywhere um, that, that I thought they, they were capable of playing. So based on what we know now, uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and make an adjustment to that selection. I'm going to take Tampa Bay out of out of the finals, and I'm probably going to agree with you on this one, Mike. I think it's going to be Pittsburgh. I know Washington's been hot as of late, um, but the, Washington's just that team that just never seems to put it together at the right time. You know, whether they play Pittsburgh or the Rangers, and the, I mean, those teams just seem to be Washington's kryptonite. I think Washington would be best served trying to win the team as long as possible. But again, they're going to get them by at least the second round, so... Sucks for them. And I think I'm going to adjust my pick as well. I know it's, it seems crazy to do that with Pittsburgh there. But, you know, and they have the same points as Pittsburgh, and I'm, I'm taking two teams out of the mix that they're in front of them points-wise. I'm going to take those Montreal Canadiens. I think they're, at this at this level, I think they're playing really well. Weber adds another dimension to that team in a way of scoring and depth. Um, Carey Price, phenomenal year. I'll take the Habs to go to go on. They will have an easier road for sure. They will. And, yeah. I, I, and I think you really can't discount that that much, you know. Part of my thesis as a Ranger fan is, well, how do I get my team into the into the finals? Which is, trust me, very, very difficult. And my thesis is, well, you avoid Pittsburgh and Washington like the plague. Uh, you go into the other division and, and hope for the best, and hopefully that one of these two teams beats up on the other, which we both suggested is a very po like the possibility in our in our season preview. Yep. But again, the powerhouse is everywhere in that division, Mike. I mean, yeah. I gotta tell you, Montreal, if, if if they catch it right, and they end up against a Washington team or a Pittsburgh team that's a little beat up from a previous series. I don't disagree with that pick at all. That's very possible. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Let's go over to the West. Let's talk about the Central Division. Um, well, we, we both had uh, we, we never thought Minnesota would be <laughs> this No, right we now. both didn't have in the playoff team. And, and, and believe it or not, I did think about Minnesota as a wild card. I thought that they could probably sneak in there. I never would have thought they'd play like this. They're having a great run. They had a streak in the league, that one mm -hmm. of the best streaks in the league. Um, I did call, actually, a Nashville Chicago, so... Put myself on the back a little bit. Chicago, we can't, what can you say about Chicago? They're always up there. Four guys in the All-Star game. I mean, they're just they're playing at a good level again. In Nashville, we talk about that Subban Weber trade that didn't hurt Nashville, uh, that didn't hurt Montreal, but it hurt Nashville. Um, I'm not necessarily sure if it hurt Nashville or not. Um, I don't think it added that much to them. I, I think it kind of kept them even keel, but they are playing well. So, I mean, you know, kudos to them. They're playing well. I think we're Nas now. I had Nashville as a playoff team as well, and, mm -hmm. and they're pretty much in the spot that I thought that they would be. Mm -hmm. um, they're a little bit ahead of a wild card right now, but I give a lot of that credit, frankly, to a disappointing team, and that's the St. Louis Blues. Um, yeah. St. Louis was my pick to go to the finals this year. They had such a good year last year, and I think that everybody, myself included, underestimated how important Brian Elliott was to that team because their goaltending has not been good. Um, they're, they've allowed the most goals of any of the teams that are currently in the playoffs. In fact, the, only a couple of teams have allowed more in the Western Conference, and that would be uh, Colorado, Winnipeg, and Dallas. And we've chronicled Dallas's goaltending issues for a while. Yep. So what was a stout defensive, you know, Ken Hitchcock coach team really has struggled in that department. They are in a playoff spot right now, not the one you really want to be in uh, because they're in a wild card, but I think that Nashville's benefited quite a bit uh, from them falling off. 
Yeah. But I know I know the team that we're both going to see a bit of a disappointment, and again, they're not in a playoff spot right now, and they were your Western Conference Stanley Cup, uh, they were. The Stanley Cup round pick, yeah. and that's the Dallas Stars. Dallas Stars. I think Dallas Stars and actually the Winnipeg Jets are two disappointments because the Winnipeg Jets, I thought, were an up-and-coming team. Again, I got a little bit blinded by what they did last year, playing a little bit better near the end of the year. But, I mean, they, did, they have won one game going into the All-Star break, but... This team's really got to get on a serious tear. I don't see it. They're only three games out of a wild card spot, Winnipeg, but I, I don't see them getting in. Um, I do see Dallas getting back in the hunt, though. I mean, I think Dallas can bring it up. They're only three games out of a wild card spot, although they're behind Calgary, who we thought um, would make a little bit of a move in, in the uh, the wild card picture. Um, it's going to be interesting that last wild card spot of the Western because they're all pretty pretty close, besides Arizona and Colorado, which are fading fast. Um, mm-hmm. Colorado fading. Huh. Yeah, they haven't even got started. My God, thirteen wins. They've only they haven't scored hundred goals they have, yet. They have twenty eight points. I think mean you can get twenty eight points in that certain amount of games. But yeah, they're they're awful right now. Now another team these teams are all behind is probably my Western surprise pick, and that's the Edmonton Oilers. If you remember the preview show, I said I really thought that Edmonton could sneak into the playoffs. They're sneaking up on nobody right now. Sixty four mm-hmm. points. That's tied for third best uh, in, in the Western Conference. They, they're tied with San Jose right now for the division lead. You know, we, we both thought. You know, again, we did not like the Taylor Hall trade. I still don't like the Taylor Hall it's trade, terrible. but I can't argue with the results that it's had yeah. because you look at what this team's been able to do. Tam- Taub has been playing very well. Mm-hmm. Connor McDavid, I think, has solidified himself yeah. as, if not the best player, Lights clearly in the out. discussion. Lights clearly out. Clearly in the discussion. They're yeah. a team that, you know, th- their goal differential is plus 20. That, that's good for second best, yep. uh, right behind Minnesota, who's just been on fire again. I think the winning streak's been a big thing there. Um, and Minnesota's a big surprise as well. But I think that, for me, Edmonton's just been a huge surprise. And I think it's, it's great for those fans out there in their new building because yeah. it's been a barren wasteland out there. I mean, they've had a lot of picks. 7-2-1 seven and, two, seven, two and one in their last 10. And you're talking they've won the last three going into the All Star break. Edmonton is making some noise out there, and they are tied with San Jose Sharks in the way of points. So, guess what, Sharks? You got another big, big fish in town here called the Edmonton Oilers that nobody would have thought I got up there. Um, I, I'll keep it going. Anaheim, who we both thought was going to be up there, they are in top three. Uh, they're only one point out of the top spot. They're all pretty jammed, a lot of jam up there. Um, but then you get into Calgary, 10 points back. I think Johnny Gaudreau injury hurt them a little bit. Sure. Um, for the six or seven games, he was out maybe even longer. Uh, but the biggest disappointment I think at West were both of us the LA Kings. Um, you know, the quick injury really killed them because they had no nobody in goal to really keep at that level. And, and they've dropped off a little bit in scoring this year in the way of the Kings. Um, you know, look their goal differential it's plus two, but you know you, they've won two going in the All Star break. But I, I don't know how the Kings recover to get back to the wild card spot with this. Um, and you know they're the only team honestly in, in in the West that has a positive differential and not in the spot right now. You know, yeah. St. Louis and Calgary both ahead of them. Um, Negative. So, we'll see. Is there anybody, Mike, that you look at? We'll start with the West and go back east. Anybody you see of the playoff teams right now that you think is in jeopardy of not finishing there at the end? In the West, you mean? Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm going to say the uh, right now the wild card team is St. Louis Blues. I don't think the Blues are going to be there. I don't think they're playing at the level to stay there. Um, I think they could fall off a little bit. You know what? And, and, and this could be a sleeper team, and, and maybe I'm wrong, but don't care about the Vancouver Canucks. Uh, you know they're they're not too far out of a wild card spot, and they have been known to get hot in the second half of the season. So I will I'll say Vancouver to replace St. Louis in the, in the playoff hunt. Okay, you know it's funny you, you look at these games and I and, and it is so tight everywhere it's so tight, yeah. and I think that those three point games are really having a big impact on that. Um, yeah, I mean, for me, if I'm looking at this and, I, and I'm looking for a team to drop out of the playoffs, I, I do think Calgary fades off. You know, Calgary has played three more games than L.A. has, and I think that L.A. has had a, a rough first half, but I think that that team's just too good to not figure it out. I think L.A. finds their way in. Um, you, you know, I don't know what uh, the situation is with Goudreau. I know he had a concussion recently. I'm not sure if he's back yet, frankly. Uh, but, he is the All-Star game, so. Oh, he is the, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. But he, he just seems to be, he's not having a great year uh, no. for, for Calgary at all. Um and even the goaltending, you know, I mean, you look at reasons, you know, Calgary's actually, if you look at their overtime losses combined, have lost more games than they've won. Mm-hmm. Same for St. Louis. Yeah. Um, they're, they're 500 at home. I mean, that, that's, you, yeah, you got to win good. your home games, you know, especially in a building like the Saddle Dome. For me, I, I think if you're looking for teams to jump in and, and over a team like Calgary, I think L.A. strikes me a little more than Vancouver does. I think they have the pedigree. Mm-hmm. So it wouldn't shock me at all for L.A. to make it in. Okay. Uh, before we leave the West, again, I did pick the Blues. To go to the finals, you had picked Dallas. <laughs> both of both of those picks are in serious jeopardy at this point. So, I'm going to give you an opportunity, based on what we know now, 
Mm-hmm. Do you want to stick with the I'm not in the playoffs right now, Dallas Stars, or do you want to make a change? <laughs> I think I'm going to change it. I change think that? I'm going to go with the Minnesota Wild team. I think they're a balanced team. I think uh, Dubak has a has having a great year in goal. And I always go back to the goaltenders because that goaltender pedigree I have. Sure. Um, but yeah, I think I think Minnesota could definitely make a run. I mean, Chicago's definitely in the talks. But if I had to take a pick right now, I, I think the Wild have a chance to go this year. They have a definite shot. So I use up all my lifelines. I can't phone a friend. I can't eliminate two. Um, <laughs> you I, could know answer. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> um, I'm definitely changing my pick. And I say that because I just don't like what I've seen out of St. Louis this year at all. I really expected them to be a much better team. I, re- I loved them last year. I really thought that they could do something this year. I'm going to be proven wrong on that. I'm going to change my pick to the Chicago Blackhawks because, I, you know, as, as good as Minnesota is, I think that if they ended up playing Chicago in the playoffs, it, it, probably in a second-round series, I, I do think that um, it's basically a lot of kryptonite for them. Sure. Um, and also, I've... I've been in the the camp of that Pecorino is in the downside of his career. I don't think he. I think he's actually hurt Nashville more than he's helped. I think that they've been buoyed by really nice forward depth and great defensive depth. The reason that I, I won't say Nashville drops out of the playoffs is because the teams behind them are St. Louis and then Dallas all the way down. So I, Colorado. I, yeah. yeah, I think Nashville's going to definitely get in. I don't know how long they're going to be there. Probably around. I don't think they get past the first round. Um, so for me, I'll, cha- I'll change my I'll change my Western Conference finalist to Chicago. Okay. Let's head back. Let's take a t- take a plane ride back east to a. You, you look there and and you look at some teams, Mike. I guess that you that's I guess it's in a playoff spot right now mm-hmm. that you feel is on the verge. That you feel might not be there uh, when all said and done. Who who stands out to you as a team? Yeah. That might not be. Well, you're going to make me say it, but I think it's the Philadelphia Flyers. I think the Flyers are right on the cusp. I think they've been back and forth. They're not solid, although they've won three into the All-Star break. I think this team is still a little bit young, maybe, than I thought. I thought they would make the wild card. I think they have a chance of falling out. And I like what Toronto's doing. Um, Toronto's really starting to come on a little bit. Um, you know, with the youth that they have, and, and Anderson's really helped them in goal. I don't think Florida's going to make a push to get back in. If they do, they're going to be easily one and done in the playoffs. But uh, yeah, give me uh, the Flyers to fall out and throw on to replace them. I agree with that mostly. I, I I came into the year thinking the Flyers might be a better team and, and end up with a worse record. Mm-hmm. Um, you, you know, again, it's you look back at their ten game win streak, played really really well, got a lot of much you know points on the board, but to follow that up losing twelve or fifteen is just yeah, it, killed them. Yeah, I mean that's good. That, that's yeah, hard, right especially back to square one. Especially when you have a bunch of teams behind them, you know that that could catch them. I agree. I don't think the Flyers make the playoffs. Um, I, I also think if I had to pick a team that might fall off, Islanders. Oh, I thought you were thinking. Oh no, in, they, they fell. Off, they fell off the wild. <laughs> wild. Um, something tells me that Ottawa's going to struggle in the second half, and I, I, I okay. like Boston more than most. I think if I had to pick a dark horse that no one's talking about to come out of the East, Boston might be that team just because of the way that they're built. Something tells me with Ottawa, I think that there's going to be a, a, bit, a bit of a struggle there in the second half. Uh, I think the trade they made with the Rangers to pick up Derek Broussard in exchange for Mika Zibanejad. Now, I know Zibanejad's been hurt, but I think Zibanejad has something like five points less than Broussard does. And I love, I like Derek Broussard, but mm-hmm. I don't think it's a trade that's really worked out for them. Um, I think, absolutely, that the Toronto Maple Leafs find a way to make the playoffs. And that's going to be great for those fans in Toronto that have waited so long to be relevant again. Um, if you're looking for another team, I think, that could... Find a way to make a run. I want to pick Florida, but I can't yeah. for obvious reasons. Yeah. The one team that's got the pedigree is Tampa, and, yeah. I don't, and, and now and now if Tampa finds their way into a wild card spot, that's probably worst case scenario for a lot of the teams that are in the higher end because that team that probably shouldn't be there. They should they should be higher than there. The Lightning have the ability to go on a run, so yeah, but, I, I don't. But but, really but I got to see something first, you know. Like before I say that, I mean again, you know, fifty points in fifty games. I mean they're five hundred to to a T. Um, but again, I, I think the Flyers drop off and I think the goaltending is going to cost them at the end. Yep. I think Toronto finds their way in. I think it's possible Ottawa, Ottawa bows out. If Ottawa bows out, I think it opens the door more for Tampa mm-hmm. than it does for Florida in, in that case. Um, as far as the cup pick, I think um, to win the Stanley Cup right now, I had Tampa. Obviously, that's probably not my it's best right now interest to, to keep yeah. it. Yeah. Um, give me Chicago. Give me Chicago again, again. What, what a sexy pick that was. Listen, <laughs> you know it's hard to pick against that team. They've been there and they've done that so much, and they're they're built so well. You know, 
Artemi Panarin, to get him for where they got him, was just an absolute steal. Mm -hmm. To pick him up for basically nothing, un unbelievable. You give that team so much credit for, for finding ways to stay under the cap. But I'm not a Taves guy. I think the Taves deal is going to end up haunting them. Mm -hmm. Give me Chicago to make another, another run. I'm going to say Pittsburgh, Minnesota in the finals. Pittsburgh wins again. How do you not? You got to knock off the champ. I mean, you know, you, you look at Sidney Crosby in the uh, skills competition the other night. He had uh, four out of, or hit, he hit four out of five targets or four out of five shots. So, you know, the guy's still a stud, still loaded Malkin, still, I, I still think you got to knock off Pittsburgh get there. But I think Minnesota takes a big step forward and goes to the finals this year. I guess to quote Ric Flair, Woo! to be the man, you, Woo! you got to beat, beat the man. man. That's so right. I, I know where you're coming from with That's there. Right. Um, I guess before we wrap up here, Mike, are there, are there any storylines that you're kind of keeping an eye out for the second half? And I say one thing that I'm keeping an eye out for mm -hmm. is with those Pittsburgh Penguins. To see if Marc Andre Fleury gets traded, I think there's going to be, yeah. and, and that's I think an overarching story. A lot line. of money, a lot of yeah. money for a 31 year old guy who has injuries in the past. I don't know if, what you're going to get for him. I, if you want to move him just to move him, that's fine. Yeah, but I think the expansion draft is going to play a big role in this year's trading deadline. Yeah. Um, from the Ranger standpoint, I guess you can even give your Flyer standpoint as a, as a Flyer fan. From the Ranger standpoint, I don't think they're going to trade for a defenseman. I know that that's been a lot of speculation, and I say that because. They can't protect a fourth defenseman. Mm -hmm. So if they have to protect three, and you're forced to protect Mark Stahl and Dan Girardi, uh, that means that you're going to protect Ryan McDonough because Brady Shea is protected. So uh, automatically by, by his uh, term of service. I love Sh Kevin Shattenkirk. I think he'll be a free agent signing, but I don't think that the Rangers go ahead and, and, and bring one in unless... Unless they find a way to get rid of five or eighteen, I don't think the Flyers make any moves. Oh, I'd love to trade Couturier right now, and I'm sure a lot of people will be against me saying that. But I, I don't think the Flyers make any big moves because Hextall's big push is to go youth. And with this team the way they are right now, I think he's happy with the team. Can't really trade Couturier for a score because you're not going to get that score you're looking for. So I think the Flyers unfortunately stand pat and and see how the rest of the league, how the rest of the season finishes out. I. On the path they're on now, I don't think they make the playoffs. I think they fall off a little bit more. And you know what? I, I said next year is going to be the year, but I might have to push it out another year. So, but we'll see. Well, let me ask you this question: Both of the goaltenders coming up on contract years. You so definitely this is get, a contract year. You definitely have to get rid of one of the goaltenders. W so, you're, will one be gone by the deadline? I, I think. I think uh, Mason will be gone. Okay. I, I think uh, not by the deadline. I think by the end of the year. I think they're going to have to re-sign Nervous to a, a backup role, and they're going to have to bring a guy in that's going to, you know. Replace Mason it to. They need some goal. They haven't had a goal touch since Hex thought. It's their biggest issue. So they've got the defense now. They've got decent defense. Um, scoring wise, they're okay scoring wise, I think. But they need a goaltender. Bottom line. There you team. go. Yeah. So that's all the time we have. Thank you for watching our mid season review of the NHL. Keep an eye out. We always have good stuff coming. You can we'll, get us everywhere. We'll be doing a lot more reviewing of the NHL as yep. well. As soon as the NFL is to be, it's fine things to talk about. So we're going to talk about a lot more hockey, a lot more basketball. No fist fights yet. So no, no, none of that yet. Yeah. Um, but again, as Mike said, and as we as we preach to you guys every time you, you, you see us in the sports box, make sure you find us on social media. I, I, Twitter at Sports Box Show. Facebook at Sports Box Show. We know a lot of you who are watching this have, have already subscribed. We want to thank you for your support. We're going to make sure you're keeping you happy with great content. But if you haven't yet subscribed to the Sports Box, that Sports Box logo is going to populate here a couple seconds from now. You'll see Mike's daughter asking you not to forget to subscribe. Don't make her upset. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and subscribe. She loves seeing the numbers go up. Got to subscribe. Tell a friend. Get get some get some viewers for us. I mean, you guys are doing a great job subscribing right now. We're going to have some great stuff. And right, let us know. We'll rugby. More than happy rugby. Well, you can do that. A anything else, we'll do it for you. Let us know. We are the face of you guys. we got some good stuff coming. And don't forget to kick. Yes. February 4th. For those of you who don't know or weren't around, because I know our subscriber account has been ballooning. Blown up, yeah. Yep. Uh, Mike attempted a 45-yard field goal yep. uh, be bad. before the holidays. Yeah. He, he didn't get. He didn't make it. No. Uh, a little short. A little short. So Mike's been training, been lifting the weights, been doing, been doing the Pilates and the yoga, and he's getting ready. Pilates. He's getting ready to try this kick one more time. So February the fourth, I believe, is what. Yeah. February the fourth. Super, Super, Super Bowl Saturday. Super Bowl Saturday. Saturday. Yep. Mike is going to take another attempt at this field goal. It's going to be exclusive to our Facebook subscriber, our Facebook like. So make sure that you're like us on Facebook because we're going to be doing it live on Facebook right That's then right. and there. Make sure you're not missing out. It's going to be one. To watch should be should be fun. We're gonna have a circus out there. I mean, me kicking. So, anyway, thanks for watching. We appreciate it. Keep an eye out. We got good stuff coming. So we're always here for you at Sports Box. The only opinion that matters is still right here. Thanks for watching. See you. Don't forget to subscribe.